Hi there. I'm Josh Dove with Viscount North America. Um, you know, a lot of times we get some questions from customers who reach out to us on social media, uh, through our website, um, directly to me, give me calls, talk to dealers. And at the end of the day, I thought it would be good to start a series of videos that um, kind of answer the biggest questions that most people have about Viscount, who we are, um, about our technology, about our company, about our production, um, just about who we are and the way we do things. So this is uh, the first video in a series of videos that we're going to be doing. Um, and I hope that if you all like this, we'll continue doing more of these things um, on more specific topics. But today, what I'm going to talk about is pretty brief. Um, it's not going to go into too much detail, but um, I'm also learning through the process. So we hope that these improve over time for you, too. Um, the topic of the day today is um, really why we chose physical modeling. Um, we'll talk about a lot of different things regarding what physical modeling is, uh, specifically our FISIS technology um, in other subsequent videos. But today we're going to kind of take it all the way back to the very beginning and how this whole thing started, how it all began. Um, and so the way that we're going to do that is uh, I'm going to kind of go through a little presentation that I have for you um, and why we chose physical modeling. To really understand why we chose physical modeling, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the process that we went through. Um, and whenever you go and, and make decisions about, okay, should we invest millions of dollars in a completely new technology, um, you really need to take a, a really close look at what you're doing and why, why you're doing it. That's the process we went through when we first began uh, discussing uh, going the route of physical modeling or of something else. We weren't sure at that moment in time what it was, but um, one thing was for sure, we weren't getting where we wanted to be with our goals and our technology and sound through the continued use of sampled sound technology. So um, that's why we began the process of, of thinking about other, other opportunities, other options, and how we can apply it to the sound of a pipe organ. Um, so the first question is why reinvent the wheel? Um, why do something different if what you're doing is okay? That's a great question, but really to answer that, you have to look at what is okay. What is okay for one company might not be okay for another company. And for sure, um, it wasn't okay for us. Uh, we weren't, we were not there. We were not convinced that it would be able to, meaning sampled sound technology, would be able to give us everything that we needed in the tools, in our tool chest to continue to advance the sound of our digital organ technology in the way that we wanted to. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's another thing that came up uh, several times. Um, of course, it sounded a little different in Italian, but at the end of the day, uh, that was one thing that definitely came up. Um, why are we going through this process? Everybody's happy with sampled sound technology. Why do we need to think about doing anything else? other than than just improving on sampled sound technology. This was a good argument, I suppose. And it was certainly something that we considered and looked deeply into when we first started the process of of developing FISIS. And finally, I, which I've already touched on is, uh, um, can't we just improve what we have and make it better? Um, you know, what are the limitations of doing that? And how does that uh, affect whether or not we choose another technology and have to pretty much completely uh, start from scratch in our development process. Whereas we already had decades of experience with the sampled sound technology. Why don't we just make that better? Uh, well, we'll tell you why. We'll tell you why. So a couple of things to think about, and this I'm going to uh, make a little bigger for you because I think it's really important. Viscount, I will tell you if you don't know, Viscount does everything, makes every decision with intent. They think about it. They're thoughtful They are uh, about it. They're not reactive. 
they are making a decision based on what we believe is best for our customers, not what's going on in the marketplace, not what is going on with our competitors. Um, and we are not afraid to make big, bold changes if that's what's required to give our customers the best that they deserve. So one thing we did is we started looking at, okay, well, how much has digital organ technology generally uh, uh, innovated over time or improved over time? How, ha how much has that happened? And also too, how is it perceived within other industries? So what we did is we realized we shouldn't look at other at other digital organ customers to see what they think, because frankly speaking, they've only known sample town technology from everyone. So their perception is quite different than maybe other, uh, other, uh, consumer electronics technologies out there in the world. So we didn't just consider digital organ customers. We considered everyone because of that, this little chart here, um, is pretty interesting. Um, so if you look at the chart, there is what's called the innovation perception curve. And what Viscount did in the research and development team, as well as the administrative team, they all got together and they gathered as much data as possible from varying industries um, in the technological realm. So this is uh, automobile industry. This is uh, flat screen TVs. This is... Uh, also other sound generating products within the music industry. So what they did is they looked at basically a period in time to determine during that period of time, how have we kept up with other industries as far as technological advances go? So we started in 1990 when we did this study in 1990, uh, there, there's a very good reason that we started with 1990. If you all are familiar with the digital organ realm, that's when pretty much everybody out there at that point close to it was on a sample based platform or was heading in that direction within a matter of a couple of years. So that's why we picked that starting point. <laughs> what we found was so interesting because uh, it well, maybe interesting to some, it kind of didn't surprise us at all. Uh, because we were asking these, ourselves these questions too. But if you look at, at consumer electronics and the curve in which the technological advances happened from 1990 during a 15-year period to 2005, uh, and then you look at what really happened in the digital organ realm, uh, it's quite obvious that we have not kept up from a technological standpoint with what's going on in other industries. Um, it's a little slower in the digital organ realm. We get it. But at the same time, this was not satisfactory to us in any way. We felt that that this chart and this, uh, this innovation perception curve um, was indicative of the bigger problem. And also the question we're asking ourselves about sampled sound technology. How is it possible that we can really completely turn the industry on its head and create something, not just to create it, but to create it in a way that is completely and totally revolutionary and better? So that was key for us. We didn't want to do something just to do it. We wanted to do it to make sure that it made sense and was a true improvement over what we had available to us if we were going to make this change. So. Uh, we did. And uh, um, once we uh, once we were able to determine that there there was something else that we looked into, we said, OK, let's look a little deeper into. Um, let's look a, a little deeper into what things are considered by digital organ customers when they buy an organ. So after we determined we're way behind um, when it comes to other industries, what we did is we looked at our own industry and we said, OK, what are the determining factors when when someone when a consumer is buying a new digital organ? What are the what are the factors they consider? Um, some w one thing that we determined was the basis of everything was did it have good sound? Did it have good voicing? Um, 
And frankly speaking, um, this was an issue for us because we knew coming from also the same perspective as any of our competitors in the sample sound, sampled sound organ world, sampled sounds are sampled sounds are sampled sounds. They are processed in different ways depending on the manufacturer. But at the end of the day, it came down to a personal preference. It was, I like the sound of brand A. I like the sound of brand uh, R. I like the sound of brand whatever. Go down the alphabet, if you will. So the point being, um, you know, we looked at this and said, well, you know, that's that's silly uh, to us to only consider sound and voicing because we're all using some of the same uh, types of editing parameters to be able to do what we want. And at the end of the day, it's a recorded sound during an only short period of time. We'll get into that more in a minute. But um, so the, the next part is the number of stops and manuals. So, you know, this is a pretty boring reason. But at the end of the day, if a if a church is looking for two manuals, they're looking for three manuals, they're looking for rocker tabs or stop tabs, they're looking for draw knob organ. Are they looking for lighted draw knobs or movable draw knobs? These are things to consider. They're very, very important. Um, but we found that that was next in line for the customer to consider when they were buying a new uh, digital organ. Third is a quality console. This is a given and it's important really across the board, but also too, Frankly speaking, and I don't mind admitting this, <clears throat> across the board in the major manufacturers of digital organs, they all make a pretty good quality instrument when you're talking about a church organ level instrument. You're talking about that level going into a church, being there for decades. The console quality at that time, um, it's in our opinion, changed a little bit over the recent uh, years. But having said that, at the time that we were looking into this, we could we could uh, um, definitely say that pretty much if you got any of the consoles from the major manufacturers, you'd be OK as far as console quality goes at that time for the church organ line specifically. Um, so that was another big consideration. <clears throat> then finally, it came down to brand recognition, just simply, well, my grandma had this organ installed in her church 30 or 40 years ago. So I'm familiar with that organ name. Let's go look at that organ. Um, makes sense. Makes sense. But talk to one of your grandkids today or one of your kids today when they're considering buying a new automobile. Um, I would put uh, a wager down that says that most likely uh, 20 years ago, just like you would have never known the name Tesla or something like that. Um, probably GM was also not thinking about any other brands either. The consumer today, we though know, considers many more factors other than just the name. The name is important, but at the end of the day, what is the product? How good is the product? What can it do for me? Is there anything else out there better that I might not know a name of? I have no problem going there and seeking it out. And just because I don't know the brand name does not mean that I'm going to rule it out. Uh, during the time of this study, we found that brand name, just being comfortable with the brand name meant a lot to the consumer. And that was the decision. Sometimes often the decision was made off of that fact, simply because there wasn't enough of of a difference in the other features to make a decision on anything other than based on what you just, what you know, what you know as a consumer. Um, and you know the name. Uh, and then too, of course, the price, you know, was there one where we could save a little money on here or there? That was important too um, uh, with the consumer as well for obvious reasons, just depending on your budget. When we read this list, we thought about it and we're like, there's got to be more. There's got to be more reasons to buy a digital organ other than how many stops it has and then go piston counting to determine how many numbers of pistons and then to determine whether or not we like we think this sound is slightly more pleasant than this sound, um, you know, among among the other things that I've listed. But at the end of the day, um, this, of course, is is very simplified. But um, th this demonstration anyway. But at the end of the day, these are the most important factors that we found to go into the process of some of a church looking for or an individual looking for a new organ. Um, 
we want people to be inspired by our instruments. We want people to say, we want a Viscount, not because I just know the Viscount, but we want a Viscount because it can do so much. It can do so many different things. It can do whatever I want it to as an organist or as a church uh, member or a member of the church ministry. Um, and it can do it easily and it can do it better than anything else, not by a little bit, but by a whole lot. So that's that was really our desire in that. And because of that, um, we needed to seek out more. Now, that was the case for making some moves. But at the, at the same time, we have to consider, um, hey, you know, let's relook at this with sampled sounds. Let's determine if there is another way. Let's see if there's something else that we can do with sampled sounds that no one has thought of before. But what's interesting about that is we thought of the same things that many of the other uh, manufacturers did as well. And one thing is you're really reliant simply on uh, um, the technology of recording the pipes and you're reliant on that. You're actually bound by that in a lot of ways um, to determine when you can come up with something better. So if a better microphone comes out, you can get a better recording, meaning you can offer your consumer, your customer something more than what they had before. But of course you have to buy a new organ to get it, even if they just bought one five years ago. So this was also a problem we'll talk about in subsequent videos. But for now, we're just gonna look at the limitations of sampled sounds that we had as challenges and what made us determine to consider something else, um, which in our case was physical modeling technology. Each note is a recording of only a few seconds in time. Um, ask anybody what this means is essentially, you know, if you think about a pipe organ, a pipe organ is never speaks and never, never speaks the same way twice. That's important. But also too, what's also, what's also incredibly important is the fact that, that it is reliant on the organist who is playing the organ. This organ doesn't just speak randomly. This organ speaks on, on the laws of physics based on how much air pressure there is available in the wind chest, based on how that attack acts at that moment in time, based on the temperature of the room, the air pressure, all of these things matter. Um, how many other stops you're playing at that same moment in time? These are incredibly important aspects of what it means to be a pipe organ. And at the end of the day, we're going eight seconds in time looped over and over for the next 20, 30 years. How boring could that be? That's literally what you have with a sample based instrument, um, at least in our personal experience. Um, it could be six seconds, it could be eight seconds. We really don't care, okay? Because at the end of the day, if it was five minutes looped of a sound, of a note, of a, of a rank of pipes, um, five minutes doesn't come anywhere close to, to comparison of a real pipe organ speaking in real time based on changes in the room and changes in the instrument and everything else that goes into making a sound. So for us, this was incredibly important and a, an immediate fault of sampled based technology in our opinion. Okay. So what we thought about was yes, we could increase the length of the recording, but at the end of the day, is that really doing what we want? Because we're just copying and what copy is as good as the original. There is no copy that is good as that is as good as the original period there. It doesn't exist. There is no copy. I'm sorry, but um, there just isn't. So for us extending the length of the recording or randomly choosing a point in the recording to play each time the note is played, again, is not the way a real pipe organ works. So in our opinion, we needed to create a pipe organ and how a pipe organ acts, not just how a pipe organ sounds. That was really important to us. So moving along, I'm going to probably go a little quicker with some of these. I want to keep the video short this first time. Significant hardware demands. Look on the inside of any organ. And I will tell you from personal experience, um, just so you know a little bit about me, I came from a third generation uh, family owned business uh, before my involvement with Viscount. And, and uh, um, uh, we were really involved in digital organs. 
So one thing that my gra- I remember my grandfather doing when I was a little kid was pulling off the back of an organ of another brand. And frankly speaking, at the time he could have pulled, at the time, 15, 20 years ago, he could have pulled the back off of a, of a sample based Viscount. I would have the same statement that I have right now. Okay. But he came to me and he said, Joshua, look at the back, of, look inside this organ. Look at all of this equipment. Look at everything, all these systems. My point being, he was incredibly impressed with the sophistication of the system at that time. Fast forward to 2022, you and I both know that more is not more when it comes to technology and hardware. More is less, more is far less. And so this was a problem for us also from the standpoint of repairability in the future, systems relying on each other in order to operate. For sample-based instruments, we had to have massive amounts of hard drive space. You had to have separate amplifier um, systems, depending on how many channels you had. You had to have different power supplies for different systems within the organ. You had to have these things communicate with the capture action. You had to have the capture action communicate with the stop tabs. You had to have those things communicate with the sound generation. And the sound generation was the was one of the biggest pieces of hardware because you had to have racks and racks and racks of, of boards in cages. Um, and to me, as a younger generation looking at it, I'm going, man, why does this thing have to be inside a metal cage? The only reason something have to be inside of a metal, metal cage is because it's not something like what we're using these days. And uh, um, it made me start thinking about some of this too as a, as a young person in the industry. But at the end of the day, um, what I'll tell you is that sample-based technology um, required a lot of significant hardware demands uh, for a multitude of reasons. <clears throat> Difficult to modify or change voices for the end user. You know, this was a real issue for us. We wanted the, the organist to be able to say, hey, I, I wanna play on this, uh, voice and I only, ha- but I only have X, Y, Z to play on out, you know, the, the manufacturer only gave me four or five or six other voices to play on that stop. You know, if any at all, frankly speaking, some entry level organs at the time had no alternative and you just simply pushed a button and got a different organ, maybe, um, but you could not inter- intertwine any kind of voices between the two or the three or the four, four organs. So for us, this was a, this was a big, big deal. Um, uh, in, in more recent years, hard drive space has gotten larger and some of our competitors are now um, offering additional voices on every single stop within the organ. Um, we knew that this would happen eventually. It was where we knew we would be going if we didn't do something different. But um, again, you're still limited because at the end of the day, what if still there was a voice that you wanted that wasn't given to you by the by the um, organ manufacturer in your organ on day one. How will you get it? Well, maybe you can, maybe you can't, maybe it's not possible. I think that's a good question to ask. We asked it and we came to the determination that it was pretty difficult to do. Um, and if you can, it requires you to pay a dealer to come out, spend a pile of time in programming to put this voice on for you that you may or may not use one or two or three times until the next six months when you want to use it again. But what if you change your mind again? The other thing is that voice that they put on, what if it was improved only six months later? Do you have to get another voice? Well, see, that was a problem for us and something that we were able to address in FISIS technology. Our customers can have any voice they want anywhere in the organ at any time. And it's super simple to do, very, very easy. Um, and most of it doesn't require a, uh, a dealer at all to come and do it for you. So that's pretty cool. Um, but we'll talk about that in another, in another uh, video. The other big thing that really was an issue is that sample-based technology, in our opinion, again, this is all our opinion, doesn't replicate the physical characteristics of a pipe organ. Sure, you have a sound of a pipe, but that is, in our opinion, one very, very small portion of what it means to be a pipe organ. We're not trying to copy a pipe organ. We are trying to be a pipe organ. And if you want to be a pipe organ, 
you must completely do everything that a pipe organ does. So it's not just about sounding like a pipe organ, it's about acting like a pipe organ. Not only acting like one in a random way, we wanted the ability for the actual organist to be playing and the organ literally respond to the way that they have played, the stops they have chosen, the types of wind chest that those pipes are on, the way it would act in a certain environment, just like a real pipe organ. We wanted all of those things to be a part of what it meant to be a digital organ. This was something that was incredibly difficult. And at the end of the day, what we determined was, is it is mostly reliant on randomness. Now, what is available in some consumer uh, products in the digital organ realm uh, is what we foresaw to be uh, the developments of the sample-based organs, which is in fact um, referred to as live streaming and things like that. But this is essentially a stop that is um, being played at different portions of the recording every time. Um, as well as uh, different attacks happening. Um, so it does give it a little more liveliness. But again, this is for the most part a random uh, uh, effect on top of the uh, original and only sample in the organ. Um, so that, that was something for us to consider as well and why we decided to move on. Uh, not easily updatable. This was a big thing for us. Still to this day, if you were to say, hey, you know, if a, if a, if a sample-based organ, uh, you, you bought one, and then three years later, there was something else that came out, and you said, hey, um, can I get those sounds? The answer most likely would be no, because they're operating on two separate um, platforms, totally, in some cases. And this was inherent of sampled sound technology, not of what our competitors were doing. This had nothing to do with our competitors or or it just had to do with the platform. So we, we feel their pain. Honestly, we feel their pain because it's a constant challenge. Um, so for the most part, an, an update in a sample based organ meant very little to the customer. Now, it, it did re repair like bugs and stuff like that. But uh, at the end of the day, it wasn't making the organ sound better. See, what we wanted, we wanted the ability to have an organ, a digital organ that you literally, on day one, it would not sound the same. It would sound better than it did on day 100. So this was really important to us. I still, to this day, um, oftentimes go to uh, some churches and, and repair some organs that my grandfather installed 20 or 25 years ago. And I can remember what those things sounded like when I first heard them as a kid. And I was like, wow, these things are amazing. This is amazing. It sounds so realistic. Um, and frankly speaking, it did. It did. To me, to my ear, it sounded better than the previous sample-based technology. So to me, it was a major improvement and was like, whoa, this is pretty incredible. Um, and, uh, um, and I have no problem saying it was with another company. It was with another manufacturer. Um, but fast forward to today, I can go to a sample based organ that was installed five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And I can hear a dramatic difference in the way each one sounds getting worse. It seems like most of the time, the farther you go back in time. My point though is is that we at Viscount wanted to be able to take an existing organ and keep it up to date with the very best in technology, whether or not that be through subsequent operating system updates, being able to insert, insert um, new and better voice models, um, voices, stops, if you will, um, and, and also keep up with, with uh, um, what users' demands are. So, you know, one thing is with my cell phone, a lot of times I notice that it'll do an update in the middle of the night. This is all based on open source uh, technology, open source platforms. And, and a lot of times some of the features that come on board are because people like me and you are going to the manufacturer saying, hey, can you do this? Can you give me this feature? Can you give me that feature? Hey, this doesn't work quite right. Can you fix that or can you change this? Um, and the next thing you know, in an operating system update, it happens. Well, why in the world don't, doesn't our digital organ do that? You know, that was a big, big issue for us. And we found that it was quite cumbersome on a digital organ uh, that uses sampled based technology.
sound is only as good as the recorded sample. I mentioned this in the beginning and it's, it's true. Um, you can't have a recording, you can't have a sound of any kind, even in an organ that was released last month. You cannot have an organ that sounds as good as what a microphone in five years from now will be able to provide. So what do you do? What do you do? You do nothing. You buy it and you're stuck in time for the most part. So for us, this was an issue. Or let me let me make uh, a, a bit of a clarification. Or with a lot of money a whole lot of money to be able to change the platform, to be able to do whatever you needed to do in the future, potentially. We've yet to see that really in a meaningful way in the sampled sound realm, which is why uh, we um, made the change to Fisis technology. But, you know, it was something that was that was important. Ha, huh, ne never changes. So, um, you know, for the most part, what you get on day one, and I will tell you, you buy a brand new sampled sound organ, you're going to be really happy with it. If you buy if you buy one from a company today, you're going to be really happy with it. Um, they sound great and they're doing a phenomenal job. And with the power of uh, better microphones and also some really creative ways that we had thought about about 15 years ago, um, you know, they're they're creating a more lifelike pipe like instrument. Um, but at the end of the day, you're still limited to to the options that are given to you through that platform. So this was something that was big. The other thing that we don't like about sampled sound-based technologies when we were looking at developing this even further was that all of these things, whether or not it be random attacks, those are multiple samples, or a live streaming of the sample. Sometimes it's actually not the same sample, but it's a different sample that is used each each time that it's played. So it sounds like a different sound a little bit. At the end of the day, these are what is referred to as, in our opinion, is, a, is a effects on top of effects, on top of effects. You know, what happens with processed music? Think about that for a minute. That's a really great example probably of what I'm talking about. And is we wanted something that in its core was the true sound. The, the way that you achieve that in samples is by doing pi piling on the processing, manipulating that recording, adding effects on top of it, inserting air noise, uh, which is another sample, and then another sample. And we found that a lot of times it, it actually has the opposite effect because you have so many different effects on top of it. It loses its, its original character in a lot of ways. So, you know, because a pipe organ is imperfect. Um, and so that's some of the allure of a pipe organ is the fact that it's unique and different every single time. Um, so at the end of the day, what we determined was physical modeling. It gave us something that we could not achieve through sampled sound technology, at least for us. Um, and uh, um, so, you know, at the end of the day, we wanted to create not copy a pipe organ. In fact, I'll take that a step further. We didn't just want to create a pipe organ. We wanted our technology to become a pipe organ. Um, so for us, that's our end goal is for our organs to become a pipe organ, act like a pipe organ, be a pipe organ, and be able to have a a lot of opportunity to continue to improve on it, but we definitely didn't want our customers left in the dust as we continue to improve our, our voice models and what was available to it. So, you know, that's, that's one of the biggest things I think that's important to understand is when I first talk about physics technology to someone, I say, we're not trying to sound like a pipe organ. They go, what do you mean by that? I say, we're trying to be a pipe organ. We want to build a pipe organ for you specifically. We want to build that scaling of that rank specifically for your room. We want to put it on wind pressures that would be appropriate if a pipe organ was building your pipe organ specifically for that room. We want to determine what metal content should be in that rank of pipes specifically for the, the desired sound you want 
So for us, these things cannot be done through samples because we're taking a sample that already exists and trying to manipulate it into something it never meant to was never meant to be because the pipe organ builder that made the pipe never intended it to be something other than what it sounded like. But with physics technology, we can literally build it precisely how we want at any time, um, specifically for the church and for the home customer. So thank you very much. My name is Josh Dove. I'm the managing director for Viscount North America. Um, I hope you found this informative. Um, understand that these are really my opinions and also the opinions of many of us in the Viscount family. Um, you go and you do your due diligence. You ask the hard questions to um, whoever you want to and you determine for yourself. One very interesting thing I'm gonna leave you with, I am gonna play you a video, um, uh, a quick video, it's three minutes. Three minutes, it's a, it's a video that kind of goes over what physics technology is, which I didn't touch on too much, but uh, I think it'd be important for you to see this video. But what's really funny to me is that I'm gonna share a video with you of a recording, okay? That is a sample. So I strongly encourage you to send me an email, Give us a call at Viscount um, and say, hey, we want to see an organ for ourselves and hear it for ourselves. We want to meet with you and determine what it sounds like. I encourage you to do this with all of our competitors and then come and talk with us and we'd be happy to help you out in any way we can. But uh, um, here is a quick video. If I can get this thing to what in the world, um, I will. Here we go. Okay, sorry. This is a quick video on Viscount Physis Technology.
All right. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate that. This went way over what I thought it would, but have a great weekend and uh, be in touch. Stay well.